it's Amy here and I've got another process video for you. This month, October, on the UK Scrap Addict, I'm going to try something different and I'm going to try and do a live commentary. As I create this layout, we'll see how it turns out. Um, so this month's theme is small photographs. So I've printed out four small two inch by two inch square photographs and these are what I'm going to use on my page so I'll just go ahead and cut those out but small photographs are really useful if your photographs come out slightly blurry for example and they're not of the highest quality like these photographs a lot of the children are moving and so they're quite blurry but I still want to document the event and I've chosen four similar photographs but they are slightly different so it kind of shows the movement and action I'm also going to be using this sketch that I've created I'm quite new to making sketches so this is my second sketch that I've made and as you can see, it's going to be quite a nice simple grid layout with the four photographs. And I need four pieces of pattern paper, one for the background here, and then three others to create two by two squares, and some journaling and some stars. So, I've selected my four papers. I'm using the Vicky Bruton field notes collection so I'm going to use this as my big background piece and then I've selected papers that match the colours the yellow, blues and pinks of the photographs for those squares so let's see how this works out so I need to cut this to 9 inches and instead of pulling out my arm each time what I'll often do is I know the paper is 12 by 12 so I'll just go ahead and cut 3 inches off it and I'm cutting it off so that the piece that I don't use has the perforation edge and now I can already go ahead and glue this piece of paper down here find my glue now I know I am using a glue stick and I know a lot of scrapbookers don't like glue sticks but I love using mine I know it's not always archival and I should use double sided tape and I keep trying and I can't find it it's just like so when you want to line things up it just has so much more give I really enjoy so I'm using a piece of white American Crafts textured cardstock and I can see that the paper is just coming up slightly bigger so I'm just going to trim it off to size so that's my big piece I think what I'm going to do now is take my other three pattern papers and I need four of each squares two by two inches in size to match the photograph so i've got this dark blue i'll just trim it along the raised head so that's two inches and now i will just cut line it up nice and square one squeaky i should like squeak it's always, always done it just when I go that way, isn't it? It's squeaking. Okay, so there's my four dark blue. I've got some yellow. You can see it's quite textured. On this edge is slightly darker yellow than this edge, so I think I'll use slightly brighter, darker colours. Line it up along the grid again. And again, I don't want to use this perforated edge, so I'll start from the other edge cut my four yellow squares now, if you like this style of video please do let me know in the comments I don't really know how it's going to work out I may even end up scrapping the voice part and doing a voiceover 
And now I just need four pink squares and two inch strip. And squeak. One, two, three. I hope this isn't going to be hugely tedious because I suppose the thing with me telling you, talking as I'm doing it, is I can't speed up the video. So this I think is going to be an invaluable tool when I'm coming to sticking it down. So first of all, my photographs have a slight order to them. They were taken at Airhop and it's of my middle son playing this game. So this one goes last when he's knocked over. This is him being knocked over. So, and then this is just as it's reaching, so that's the order that they need to go in. So, we'll say I'm going to use this. I'm going to go one, two, pink, a pink one, and a blue one. So now I can see. And you could maybe not line them up quite so much, but I think something like that, about there to start. And let's keep these in the right order. And we will put this, I think, going this way across. And literally going to stick my squares in like here. Uh, something like that. Maybe if I put this there, I'll be working in inches. That's better. So, okay. And then I'll stick my photograph down. So, I personally printed out my photographs using. Um, photo editing software on my PC and it lets you create the grids for you. The other way I will do it is I use an app on my phone and then I can print directly from the phone. If you don't print your own photographs you can do the same and then make a file and get it sent off to be printed. So I'm happy with those. Now work out the next layer and I did make the sketch so that you don't end up with two bits of colour. So I'm using the yellow as the polka dot, the pink as the diagonal stripe and the blue as this textured here. So next I'm going to want a pink, a yellow, a blue and then my photograph. Yeah. Again just a bit of Glue in the photograph and I'll leave about the same and just sort of like leaving an eighth of an inch roughly all lined up nice and straight and I always think as long as it looks straight with the eye that's the most important because that's what people are going to be looking they're not going to get a measuring ruler out when they're looking through your album so again leaving a quarter of an inch on the blue paper so maybe I will leave you now and I'll speed this portion of the video up and I will be back when I've stuck all of these squares of paper into my grid shape see you in a minute Okay, so I am finished with this grid layout. 
and now I think I'm going to put my title here I'm going to put the title Wipeout at Air Hop I'm going to start from this end and work backwards I've got my straight line now and I've chosen these gold thickers they're a nice tall skinny font so you can get quite a long title on your page and I think I'm going to line the first letter up approximately with the start of this and particular set of thickers feel like they are really quite sticky so I don't think I'm going to need any extra adhesive onto these. So here's my title. So referring back to the sketch, it now has a row of elements at the bottom and then these three middle size elements overlapping and a large one here and I think I am going to go with the stars but of course because it's a sketch you don't have to do stars you could do butterflies you could do hearts you could do flowers it depends on how it fits but I think actually stars are going to work really nicely with this themed layout and I've got these gold decorative trim from the Maggie Holmes Willow Lane collection and I thought this would work nicely as the bottom here. I'm going to need to start to get a bit more organised now. And I'm just going to cut off this star because it's got a bit squished. There we go. And cut a length approximately the same size as my photograph. So cut the star off there. And I'm not sure what adhesive. Let's see if my pit stick will hold. A dab on stars. I think actually it's quite a textured fabric and it may hold. I find sometimes pit stick will hold a lot more than you might initially think. It's a bit messy sometimes. I know that's why a lot of people don't like it. You don't end up with sticky fingers. Okay, so we're gonna eyeball the first one, the last one, and then let's get them all. Straight. Okay. I think that's good. Okay. And now I think I'm going to die cut the three medium and one large star. So bear with me. I am going to find some tight to be organised gold foil. So I'm gonna cut a strip of that like that and cut away and organize. Sometimes I find it a bit difficult cutting foiled paper because it's kind of like got the metallic bit layered up. I've got these star dies from X cut, one, two, three, four, five different sizes. I think I'm going to go for the second to large one for my medium sized elements. Stick that Good, so I want two more of those, and then the next size up, I want one of, so I'll run these three together. And then I just 
need one more of the smallest things. Got a slight indentation around it, but that looks pretty enough to me. And one more size do that. And I'm just thinking about after this, since I've done these, it's the journaling, and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet. I didn't really think quite so far ahead. Let's get these shut down anyway. See what happens. Okay, so looking at the sketch, we've got one that goes here, one that goes here, and one that goes here. And I've designed these so that you've got the triangular point, and then this extra large big one just frames the journaling and one of the photographs so I'll stick this on and this just kind of breaks up the grid pattern so this almost goes right to the edge of the page this one goes up at an angle right on the corner there of all four of them and this one is on the corner. I'm gonna put it actually that way. And it's luckily that it's worked out that I'm not covering up any important bits of my photograph. Here are the main focal points. And let's stick my large star on and then take a look. So this one is quite large and it's gonna go. Yeah. Well, maybe having, if I did it again, I might have swapped this over just because the yellow and the gold doesn't have quite as much contrast as I would like. But I guess it's all a learning curve, really. Uh, let me think what we can put some journaling down there. You have these are like printed journaling strips. So see if there's anything about having fun. Something like this would work quite well. Life doesn't have to be perfect to be wonderful. So just move it over slightly so it's overlapping. Again, I could use my ruler, but I think that that's pretty straight. We are fearless, independent, and original. Seems like another good one. And one more. If I was being super organized, I probably should have wrote out some journaling. for one more. Let's go with you can do anything but not everything. And yeah, I could have typed out some journaling but I probably will be, I've got some other photographs of other things from this same event so I'm happy with that. Now I do want to put a date on somewhere. I think I'm just going to stamp it down the bottom here and this is my roller date stamp I just got it off Amazon and I figured out a way how you can use it without getting too messy so you push it down and then you select the date that you want I want this was taken on the 16th September 2018 so when you press it down this is what's going to be stamped as you lift it up it rotates at 180 degrees and it inks it like this and that's got the date on it it's 
not so contrasty on the blue but that's okay and now I this has got everything that the page has got I'm just going to go quickly through some embellishments just to see if there's anything I don't really want to bring in the green. Then I've got one of these die cuts from the same Vicky Booth and range, so we'll just see if there's a little bit. Just looking for small bits of colour, really, just to see. Maybe like that looks good to me just to break up that grid again really fancy animal quite mm, just thought of these I think are going to be this one looks good a bit an adventure story I'm probably happy just with those two pieces, to be honest. Don't really want to bring in the craft colour. No, it's an outdoor butterfly, it's indoor pictures, and things. They have a hard time mixing those up again. It's got no floral, so I think I'll keep it that way. So I think. I'm going to stick this down a bit, put it slightly on centre. That one I'm just going to lift up on a bit of foam tape. And I do want to just put something on top of there. I might go back to my stickers and I think I'm going to look at this puppy heart sticker so I've got some blues um, all the colours up in this corner and actually let's get the dark blue heart there as well and I was going to use enamel dots but these puffy stickers have these tiny little dots on so I think I'm going to pick out one of each colour I just want a little bit of colour up on the white to make a triangle there's no aqua blue group of two ideally I would have liked another pink one that's good and I think I'm gonna call this layout done so I really hope you enjoyed watching me how I create this in real time I hope that you liked the sketch I'm gonna leave this up on the UK scrap addicts blog and probably hopefully their Instagram so that if you use this please feel free to hashtag me tag me in it somehow i would love to see somebody using my sketch and in the meantime i will leave you to do whatever you're doing have a good day
Bye.